Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance. Thank you so much for joining me here yet again, and as always, let's get started with the news. Now, this week it's time to take a look at Theros Beyond Death's biggest value trends after its first full week on Magic Online. The set was out when I made last week's video, but we were only two or three days into its lifespan. The overall value for a new Magic expansion tends to level out and reach equilibrium about 10 days into its life, so at this point we can actually start to divine some meaningful information from looking at price charts for Theros. First off, we have got to talk about Heliod's Suncrown. Heliod was everybody's favorite mythic rare during preview season, and there was a lot of chatter about its combo potential with Walking Ballista in Pioneer. At this point, it looks like that combo is somewhere between okay and pretty good. I've seen a few different mono whitelists show up in Pioneer events, and it does look like it has some game, but it's far from being the overpowered threat that some people thought it might. This explains why Heliod was unable to sustain its initial 60 ticket price mark, and also why it's holding steady at 28 tickets right now. If you simply look at the week-to-week -week trends for Heliod, it looks like it might be one of the bigger busts in the set because it dropped a full 20 tickets this week from 48 down to 28. However, all of that value was lost early last week when the entire set was going down, and Heliod has actually been fairly stable near the 30 ticket price mark for the past 5 or 6 days. Heliod's future value is going to depend almost entirely on how good that Walking Ballista combo ends up being though, which is why I'm going to be very closely monitoring this card over the coming weeks. It is certainly possible that we're still looking at a future 60 ticket card, or we could be looking at a total bust, but right now this 28 ticket value, it seems both fair and stable. Let's move on to the other super expensive card in Theros Beyond Death, Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath. Uro is currently selling for 36 tickets, a gain of about one ticket from last week, and its price chart has been relatively stable over the past seven days as well. Since standard playability doesn't matter much when it comes to MTGO prices, the card's future price tag is going to depend on how much play it sees in decks like Amulet Titan in Modern and Simic Ramp in Pioneer. At this point, it's a little too early to say whether Uro is going to become an eternal staple or not, but right now the testing does look promising, so if Uro does end up seeing a ton of play across multiple formats, you can expect peaks into the 50s or even the 60s at some point, like what happened with Oko, Arclight Phoenix, Teferi, and all of the other recent modern and pioneer playable all-stars. Of course, almost every other card in Theros Beyond Death had a losing week, but that's expected behavior for the first 10 days of a new set's release. Theros's value peaked at 275 tickets the day after it came out, and now it's at a much more stable 135 tickets per set. Even the best cards in Theros Beyond Death have dropped a couple of tickets over the past weeks, which is just what happens when the available supply increases tenfold over the course of 10 days. So honestly, the real shock is when a card doesn't tank on week one, which is why I want to take a little bit of a closer look at Dream Trawler. Dream Trawler isn't really an expensive card. It was half a ticket last week, and it's still under two tickets now, but it's been one of the clear breakout rares in Theros Beyond Death so far. A week ago, I wasn't even sure if Dream Trawler was good enough to see play in Standard, but now it's showing up in builds of Azorius and Jeskai Control and Pioneer. I don't think you're getting rich off this card no matter what, but Dream Trawler is clearly one of the better cards in Theros Beyond Death, and its price chart is still currently pointing up. So if Dream Trawler is still less than two tickets by the time this video goes up, I'd get yourself a set. Well, let's move on now to Gaining Ground, where the biggest gainer of the week in Pioneer was Niv Mizzet Reborn. Niv is legal and standard, and it also sees play in modern, but make no mistake, it's Pioneer that caused this week's price jump. Niv Mizzet Reborn is currently at 24 tickets and rising, an 8 ticket gain from this time last week. And the culprit is a deck called Niv to Light, which has absolutely exploded in popularity over the past couple of weeks. It first popped up on my radar back on the 12th of January, and all its sentence then has become the second most popular deck in all of Pioneer. 
Everybody wants to play with Niv, and I understand why. It's powerful, it's fun, and who doesn't love five-color nonsense? Financially, the other two key pieces in Niv to light are Teferi Time Raveler and Mana Confluence. Teferi saw modest gains this week, while Mana Confluence actually shot up seven full tickets from 20 up to 27. I'm a pretty big fan of Mana Confluence's long-term potential, especially in conjunction with this new deck, but I'm a little bit worried about buying in right now. The card's price chart appears to have peaked and is dropping a little bit, a problem that Mana Confluence has actually had before in the not-so-distant past when it hit 40 tickets back in late October before dropping all the way back down to 10. I am a believer in Niv to Light and of Mana Confluence in general, but I'd still wait a few days if you're looking to buy in, just in case the powerful land takes another tumble and you get a nice little buy low window. Over in Modern, our winners are a pair of cards that look to be somewhat dead in the water after the Oko and Mox Opal bannings. I'm talking about Urza Lord High Artificer and Ice Fang Coatl. Both of those cards dropped pretty hard after the ban announcement, and they've both rebounded fairly significantly over the past few days. Urza's up 7 tickets from 10 to 17, while the fun little Ice Snake is up about 5 tickets from 11 to 16. Both of these cards are still on the rise, too, despite the fact that their old namesake decks are nowhere near the top of the modern meta. Now, it is possible that there is some sort of crazy new Urza snow deck out there that I'm totally missing out on, and that's why these cards gained a ton of value this week, but I'd wager it is more to do with the fact that they simply had fallen too far. They may not see play in a top deck right now, but they're still really good, and they're going to find a home in every format where they're legal. So, you can buy in now if you want, but I think these gains have more to do with a price correction of last week's price than with a ton of other future potential gains. Let's move on now to our biggest losers, where in Pioneer it was Goblin Rabble Master, which plunged 9 more tickets this week from 20 down to 11, down from a high 2 weeks ago of 33. And the reasons for this loss are twofold. First, people are still settling their extra Pioneer staples in order to buy into Theros Beyond Death. And second, well, the chonky red deck that uses this card has lost some metagame share to Niv to Light this week. Chonky Red is still the third most popular deck in Pioneer, though, so I'd expect Rabble Master to rebound at some point, but its current price chart, well, it indicates that we might not have actually reached bottom yet. Honestly, if you're looking to buy into either Mono Red or Mono Black in Pioneer, you might have a really great window to do so at some point over the next week. Both decks are still excellent, and they're both still popular, but they're also somewhat old news right now, and there are a lot of shiny new toys out there. That means that the price tag for staples in Mono Red and Mono Black, like Goblin Rabble Master and Mutavault and even Kalidus, are relatively cheap at the moment. These cards are still good, and they're going to rebound at some point soon, so if you're in the market for these decks, I'd monitor all three of those staples really closely and buy in when they hit bottom over the next couple of days. Over in Modern, Renin 6 was the biggest loser of the week, dropping 10 tickets from 80 down to 70. This is a pretty misleading stat, though. What really happened was that Renin 6 jumped from 35 up to a peak of 95 in the wake of the Oko banning, and then it immediately settled down into the much more comfortable 70 ticket range. So it's not so much that this card lost 10 tickets this week, as it is that the card was always sort of headed toward this price point, but there was something of an overcorrection first. As we discussed last week, Jund went from being a very good deck before Oko was printed to kind of an unplayable deck in a world with Oko, to being a very good deck again now that Oko is banned. In fact, Jund is currently the third most popular deck in all of Modern, which bodes well for Renin 6's future price tag. Now, it's certainly possible that the metagame will shift away from Jund in the coming months. For example, if the Niv to Light deck actually makes a transition from Pioneer into Modern, that deck is a pretty good game against Jund, but so far, the early post-band returns have been very positive for the two-mana Planeswalker. Let's move on now to our Sneak of the Week, and this week's Sneak is Leyline of the Void, which jumped almost 8 tickets this week from 8 up to 16. And much like with Renin 6, this jump is a result of Modern's shift toward a radically new metagame in the wake of the Oko and Opal bannings. 
The only reason Leyline got so cheap in the first place was that it kind of fell out of favor in Modern around the same time it was reprinted in Corset 2020. And at this point, that reprinting is in a rearview mirror, and Leyline doesn't just have to contend with demand in Modern, but demand in Pioneer as well. So I don't know how high this card will climb, but its price chart is still pointing straight up at that old ceiling. As always, we're going to end the week by taking a look at the MTGO Trader sales data over the past seven days. And this should give us a good idea of which cards are the most popular on Magic Online right now, regardless of price increases or decreases. Looking at overall sales by volume, it shouldn't come as much of a shock to anyone that the list is utterly dominated by Theros Beyond Death cards. Omen of the Sea was actually the best-selling card of the week, basic lands not included of course, and you should make sure that you have a set or two of these in your collection. Now, Omen of the Sea is a common, so it'll never be worth all that much, but it's quickly proving itself to be a staple in Pioneer as well as in Standard, so make sure you have some. The next two cards on this list are Dryad of the Elysian Grove and Dream Trawler. We've already talked about why I love Dream Trawler, but the Dryad was a bit of a surprise to me, since it did drop five tickets this week from eight down to three, and it's mostly failed to make an impact in Standard so far. I have been seeing the Dryad show up a little bit in Amulet Titan and Titan Shift lists in Modern though, which means that the Dryad actually has some real upside on MTGO, even if it ends up being something of a short-term bust in Paper Magic. At any rate, these sales figures tell a very different story about demand for this card than the rest of the narrative surrounding Dryad of the Elysian Grove. So honestly, I actually think it is a pretty solid buy right now at the three ticket mark. In terms of overall sales by price, Teferi Time Raveler was the best selling card of the week for the second week running. This tracks with the rise in popularity of the Niv to Light list, and I continue to feel that Teferi is properly valued at its current 70 ticket price point. Now, it's hard to say that a card this expensive is actually a really safe hold, but with Teferi, that just feels true. It sees so much play and demand has been so consistent that I can't help but feel happy holding onto these in my collection. So if you've been looking at Teferi's slowly rising price and been really tempted to sell into the hype, well, that's okay too, selling into the hype is rarely ever wrong, but you certainly don't have to because this card is worth every cent of its massive price tag. And that's all I've got for you this week. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you again next Monday morning for another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance.